In segment six of the Breckenridge Design Project, it's about framing. We'll begin at the bottom of the structure with the garage, the I-beams and posts, the floor trusses, move up, look at the curved roof beams and I-joists for the framing there. The home has an iron and steel framing infrastructure. We'll take a look at that segment and then conclude it with the wall framing. Some of the renderings in the project from the garage, looking at our I-beams and posts, Moving up, including it here with our floor trusses, we want to be able to get our HVAC through the infrastructure. The overall framing rendering view, and this gives you a little bit of an idea of some of the steel involved with the infrastructure, and then just isolating the roof framing. Let me go ahead and get started with our garage and the framing involved with that. To support the framing in the garage, I'm looking at the main floor that's above the garage and the wall that separates the patio and the kitchen here, if I go down a level, is going to be framed in this area right here with floor trusses. The outside segment, backing up here, underneath the patio is a concrete slab and in the front of the kitchen, where my cursor is here, is going to be above the garage and actually have a lowered ceiling in the kitchen area and raised ceiling out in the patio area. Back in the program, I have the floor plan on the left hand side of my screen and the overhead dollhouse view on the right hand side. If you move up, it's pretty easy to see in the kitchen area where the hardwood is versus the patio. We're going to need to support this area and like I mentioned, this is going to be in the kitchen area formed with floor trusses and outside in the patio area will form that with a slab. I'm going to begin by drawing three eye joists. You can see the first eye joist is actually right at this wall step where the concrete wall steps down and then the second eye joist which is lower supporting the eye joist that will connect over the top of it. In the floor plan view, if I press F9, I can toggle on the floor above that, which is represented by the red line. I'm going to have that eye joist follow right underneath that supporting wall above in the kitchen and also the front wall to do that. I've been using guidelines with a CAD layer called CAD guidelines, so I don't have to have this reference layer on. So I'm going to toggle that back off by pressing F9 and open up our layer called CAD guidelines. And these are a series of lines. I've just drawn it over the top of that reference display layer. Makes it a little cleaner to do my work. Under the build menu, under framing, I'm going to choose the floor and ceiling beam tool. And I'm going to draw right over the top of that CAD line. That's a guideline for me. And then once that's selected, go ahead and double click and open it up and set some of the parameters here. First of all, the depth at 12 inches is fine in this case. I'm set the width at five and a half. My structural member is a steel I-beam, which is my default, and that should be all good. Select OK. Back in my 3D view, you can see that steel I-beam. I've created a new layer called 3D Framing Floor, which just isolates my framing floor for those components. Next, I'll create a copy of that I-beam, and I'm just going to pull that down, use the center tool, and center it on my guideline, and then open up that I-beam. And the first thing I want to do is change the depth of this beam to 17 inches. Press the tab key. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to raise this up. So I'm going to lock the depth in this case and I'm going to raise that up 17 inches. Hit apply and then back into my 3D view you can see what we've done is raise that I-beam so it's sitting right on top of my concrete wall. Now I'm going to take that I-beam and copy it so that it runs the length of the garage. So selecting that I-beam, copy, and I'll just paste it over here, rotate it around, and we'll just stretch it into the wall cavity where our beam pocket's going to be, and then we'll snap this onto the edge of the beam, zoom in, and we've got that I-beam in place so that it's going to carry the load with two 17-inch I-beams and a 12-inch below it. Now the next operation is to place a couple of posts with footings so that we can support those I-beams. Back through my menu, under framing, I'm going to choose the post with footing, and I'm just going to click in that center of that area. We'll zoom in here a little bit and select the post and I'm going to change that post to a five and a half by five and a half. Also change that to be steel and we'll select OK. And then also on this footing, if I open that footing up, I'm going to change the radius of that from eight to 12 inches, giving us a 24 inch diameter. Go into the 3D view, make any adjustments that we need to. 
and I'm just going to use the eyedropper from the steel and iron off of that onto that post. Now back in the floor plan view, I'm simply going to copy that post and footing. I'll just slide a copy down here and snap that into place over here. And then also again, we'll grab that post and I beam and footing, sorry, and copy and paste that into this position right here. And again, back in the floor plan view, you can see where we've got the support here. And this actually have my interior walls turned off is going to bear with a post embedded into one of the interior walls for the mechanical room. To create the floor framing, there's a pretty easy way to do that initially right through the menu here. If you go to the foundation and build your framing, it's going to accept most of the defaults that you already have for your platforms, give you the ability to choose the type of lumber you're going to do, what the thickness is, if you're going to lap or butt over the top of it, and you can select OK and it will build the majority of your framing. Now you may look at this and say, well, I probably would never frame it that way. Back in the floor plan view, let's undo that framing and show a couple of tools here. One is underneath the build framing is a tool called joist direction. So if I come over here and select joist direction and draw in the joist direction this way, and then I'll also drag in a joist direction this way, and it's going to say you have two different lines going two different ways, that's okay. And then the final thing I'll do is I'll make sure that this wall here in the center is marked under the structure tab as a bearing wall. And that will force the framing to consider that as a bearing wall. And now when the framing is built here, and we go back in and rebuild the floor framing, it's going to then build that with those directives in place. And if you take a look at the 3D view, all of that framing is set up. Now, to get the mechanicals through the floor, I'm actually going to use a floor truss. And the render view kind of shows you what it's going to look like. So I'm going to go ahead and delete all of those joists that the program automatically created. And I'm just going to draw these in manually. Back in the floor plan view, I'm just going to select joist, hold my shift key down, and just drag a marquee around all of those joists and with the exception, I'm going to deselect our eye joists that we have, and then I'm just going to hit the delete key. Now all those joists are deleted with the exception of my sill plates. In the floor plan view, zoom in here, and I'm going to drag out my first floor truss. Using the floor truss tool, I'm going to come in here and snap on the corner and drag out that floor truss, and I'll snap it to the other edge. Once I have that in place, I'm going to take that truss. Let me zoom out my screen here. I'm going to take that truss and I'm going to use my multiple copy tool, which should already be set to be 24 inches for trusses. Select OK. And I'm just going to drag that all the way up. And I probably went too far here. Past the end of the structure and then using the point to point move, zoom in and position that. And then back in the 3D view, you can see all of the floor trusses. Now in this area here, I'm going to have them lap over the top of one another. And if I zoom out here, I'm going to come in right in this area right here and draw another floor truss. Let's come over here and draw that out so that it goes to that edge. And again, zoom in, use the point to point move. Snap on that side, snap on that side, and get that floor truss positioned where I want. And I may actually pull this truss back, since I'm going to have trusses going the other way, and lap it back to this CAD guideline. And again, I'm going to use my multiple copy tool and pull that down near the end, but not quite to the end. And then I'm going to drag this truss, or I could draw another truss, and just snap that to the edge here. And then back in the 3D view, you can see where those floor trusses are. Floor trusses over the garage area underneath the kitchen. I'll draw those in two segments that lap over the center I-beam. So back in the floor plan view, zoom in here a little bit, use the floor truss tool, connect off of the end of the wall over the end of that floor truss. Let me zoom in and we'll pull that back here a little bit. Now that I have it the right length, I'll use the multiple copy tool and pull a set of those copies down towards the end of this I-beam and then zoom in and I'm going to actually draw a small truss in here and then I'll have to extend those. Let me just draw a small truss in here the 45 degree angle and let me use the point to point move. Take this corner, pull it over here and I'm going to have that lap to the edge of the beam and then I'm going to do a multiple copy and then extend those out. 
multiple copy, pull those over, select this line, and then use the Extend tool in the lower left hand or lower section of your menu called Extend Objects. Select that tool and draw a line right through all of those floor trusses that I want extended. And then in the 3D view, you can see that the floor trusses are extended and then the last set of floor trusses that we need to draw are a couple right in this area for our stairwell. I'll draw those in the floor plan view, come in and drag that truss out, snap it to the other truss and then use the multiple copy two copies of that truss right in here. Back into the uh, floor plan view you can see here's our trusses set up in that area and in the floor plan if I move up to the main level the next thing I'm going to do is just draw a set of floor trusses in this area and again just use the floor truss tool come over here drag out that truss position it to the edge of the wall here and then using the multiple copy Create a set of those trusses all the way to the end and again zoom in and position that last truss in place. Go ahead and just move that to the edge of the wall and I'll create one more copy of that truss since it's no longer two foot on center. And then finally you notice my CAD line and these two walls set up here. My fireplace and my railing on that second wall had extended into that area you can see in the rendering and I need to extend the floor trusses so that they extend over that platform that's represented by this orange line again if I toggle on my reference floor you can see where that railing comes in I drew a CAD line I'm just simply going to select that CAD line use my CAD tool called extend and drag right through those floor trusses that need to be extended back into the 3D view toggling on the floor indicator here and now you can see all of our floor trusses are in place we've extended this group out here toggle on my vector view a little bit easier to see those different flame framing members